Welcome to this Bentley Systems training course. In this video, you will learn how to generate static seismic loads in RAM frame according to the Australian Standard for Earthquake Action, AS 1170 Part 4. Before we look into the process of generating the seismic load cases, let us first review the mass data that will be used by the program. To do this, we will click on Loads from the main menu and then select Masses. This Diaphragm Masses dialog tabulates diaphragm masses according to their diaphragm numbers and story name. The mass data here is used in generating seismic load cases and in performing p-delta and dynamic analyses. The mass, center of mass, and mass moment of inertia for each rigid diaphragm is calculated by RAM frame using information obtained from the RAM modeler. If you wish to enter your own values, you can select user specified values instead of use calculated values. The default percentage of eccentricity is taken by the program as 5% of the overall building dimensions. Based on the percentage you provide here, the eccentricity between the center of mass and the point of application of the mass is calculated and displayed. If you wish to change the eccentricity percentage, you will need to click the Recalculate button to update the eccentricity calculation after you have changed the eccentricity percentages. If there is any mass that is not associated with any diaphragm, such as the mass components of point or line loads placed outside of any diaphragm, or self-masses from members not connected to any diaphragms, it will be listed separately with the diaphragm number specified as none. You can combine this type of mass component to any diaphragm at either the same story or another story. You can also combine the mass from one diaphragm to another diaphragm. In this example, we will combine the mass component of the basement story that does not have a diaphragm to um, the second floor. According to the clause 6.6 .6 of AS 1170 Part 4 2007, we need to consider an eccentricity of 10%. So let us make this change for both X and Y direction. And then click on Recalculate. Once we have done that, we will click on OK to come out of this uh, diaphragm masses dialog. Now we are ready for the next step, which is generating the static seismic load. To generate the static seismic load cases, we will click on Loads from the main menu, and then click on Load Cases. Next, select the Seismic option from the Load Type, and from the drop-down menu next to this, select the AS1170 Part 4 2007. Let us also enter the label as seismic for this load type and then click on the add button. Here you can select the directions along which you want the seismic loads to be generated. By default, both the X and Y directions are considered and we will leave it that way. Next, you can select the eccentricity configuration for the two different directions. We will leave the default options for this considering both positive and negative eccentricities. Moving on to the structure period, there are three options provided to you for considering the natural period of the structure in the X and Y directions. This can be a program calculated value or directly specified by the user. You can also choose to calculate the natural period based on equation 6.27 of AS1170 Part 4. According to the clause 6.2.3 of the code, the base shear obtained using a rigorous structural analysis should not be less than 
80% of the value obtained based on the equation 6.27. Thus, the user needs to enter KT value in each direction for fulfilling this requirement. This check is enforced in the program so that the natural period considered, whether it is user specified or program calculated, will not be less than 80% of the value given by the equation 6.27. Next, you should enter the structural ductility factor and structural performance factor depending on your structure according to table 6.5 of the code. You should also refer to section 3 to provide appropriate values for the probability factor and hazard factor. You can choose from between five different site subsoil classes, which again you should select considering the most appropriate option as per section 4 of the code. Finally, we can choose to generate additional seismic load cases for considering 100% and 30% loads by checking uh, Consider Orthogonal Effects checkbox. We will check this option to consider orthogonal effects but since there are no tension members, tension only members in the model, we will leave the option to generate additional load cases for tension only members uh, unchecked. When you have all the input parameters set up according to code recommendations and when you are ready to generate the seismic load cases, you can click on OK and the static seismic load cases will be generated. You can review various information related to the seismic loading like base shear and story forces after you have performed the analysis. Once you have performed the analysis, go to Reports from the main menu and then select Loads and Applied Forces. Inside this report, navigate to the page with Seismic Loads. Here, information such as the seismic load parameters, base shear and applied diaphragm forces will be available. Let us close out of this report. This concludes our training video on generating static seismic load cases according to Australian standard for earthquake action is 1170 part 4. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.